Welcome back to part two of the uh, function part of the video series. An extremely intense introduction to a rather boring subject of functions. So let's get started. The first thing, you need to watch the previous video, okay? Go watch that. And if you just need all the information from this course really quickly and you don't want to watch the rest of these videos, just check out the crash course in the description below. Definitely something I'd check out. But back to what we were talking about, every function we create needs a name. In the previous video, we used the example of a factorial function. Oh, that looks terrible. Factorial. Now, in order for this function to work, we need some input. And when we're defining a function, we say up front, here are the, the data, here's the data that we need. And these are known as parameters. And they're defined in parentheses after the function name. So we could say int n. And we give it a name. In this example, we just gave it the name n. And it's named because it's an actual variable. It's just only usable within this function. After this function, it doesn't exist. So inside of the body of the function, which we'll get to, we can reference this variable n. Okay, the next thing you need to know, by the way, just to write that down, that's a parameter. You need to remember that word. It's important. Parameter. Next thing is the return. So that is defining the type of output we're expecting from this function. So what does a factorial do? If we passed in the value five, it's going to multiply from five down to one and give us a new value. That is going to be an integer, okay? Because when we multiply integers together, the result is always an integer. That's a concept in math known as closure. The, uh, the integers are closed in multiplication. So the return type is going to be an integer. And you put that out here. So you say int factorial. So just from this so far, we know that we are creating a function that takes an integer, does some magic with it, and then gives that number back out to the caller. So what now? Well, we need the, uh, the body of the function, which is structured using these curly braces. And here we do the code to, uh, to calculate the, the actual factorial. And I'm not gonna worry about that because, because I can. <laughs> then what we do is we return. The return is important too. So there's two things you really need to know. The first thing is the return type, which is up here. That's the return type. The next thing you need to know is the return keyword, where we actually give it a value, and that is the actual data passed out of the function. It's like uh, copied out of the function, which we'll see that in, in the end of this video and into the next video. So when the function is done, we have to say return because the person calling this function is expecting something in return. You know, we it's just, it's fair, right? We, we give it, something, we give the function a cookie, and it returns us something in return. Makes sense. So we say return, and um, you can return either a value, a variable, whatever it is. Uh, we could just say, we could just return n, and this code up here would need to convert n to the, uh, the factorial. So, we got the return type, we got the return statement. And that is uh, the, the three main things you need to understand for creating a function. Okay, the next thing you need to understand is invoking the function. So if we just kind of put this to an aside, and we are now back in our main function or some other function, whatever it is, somewhere in our code, we need a factorial of some number. Well, we can just call this by saying factorial and pass in the value five, for example. Or even better, let's say we have a variable, int x equals five, and we pass in x. 
that works just the same. So the value of x, x has the value five, the value here is going to get copied into n. And then n exists within this function. So if we change n, x does not change. It stays the same. This is a copy of the value. We work with it and then we return a new value. So uh, once we get to the point of returning, that's going to be sent back to the caller. So that means we need to do something with it. If we just say factorial x, it creates a factorial and then nothing happens because we're not doing anything with that value. So what we need to do is we need to either print it out or we need to assign it to a new variable. So I could say int f equals factorial of five. Now, this f is going to contain whatever the factorial of five is, uh, which would be five times four, which is 20, times three, which is 60, times two, which is 120. So in f, um, f would contain the value 120. So the words and the, the keywords you need to know here, when we pass in some data, this is known as an argument. This is slightly different. I'm gonna jump over here for a minute. This is slightly different than a parameter. The parameter is the variable on the inside of the function. The argument is the data we pass to that parameter. There's a uh, clear difference. It's small, but it's definitely a clear difference. Unfortunately, people use these terms interchangeably, which personally, I believe that introduces confusion, um, but so many people do it. It's it's not really a big issue. I try to make sure I use the proper term because if I'm talking about a parameter, I'm talking about a local variable to a function. If I'm talking about an argument, I'm talking about a value passed into the function. Two distinct things, and you should understand the difference. And also understand that parameters, if you pass in a variable, you cannot change those inside of the function. It gets copied. The only way you can change the, the parameter is if you're doing it via a pointer. So once we get into pointers, you'll see that. And that kind of, um, that kind of explains the differences with arrays. You don't have to, uh, you don't have to, you don't have to, uh, I'm sorry. With arrays, you can change the, the array because an array decays to a pointer. So if that doesn't make any sense to you, it's cool, we haven't talked about pointers, so I don't really expect you to get that. Um, but if you get it, that's good. Uh, so yeah, that's basically everything you need to know about creating a function. Obviously, this is very conceptual and messy and disgusting, and that's fine because in the next video, we're going to create this function or something very similar to it, and we're going to be able to see all of this in action. So hopefully that was helpful and not too crazy, messy, and complex. <laughs> I, I never really under, know or understand how these videos will be taken. Because um, when I plan them, I'm like, oh, that video is freaking awesome. And then I teach it and I'm like, wow, that was a disaster. 